Shelby asks us, hello, I'm a middle school teacher and I'm having trouble with my students. But wait, there's more. Going to our team's homepage and starting their own meetings. This is leading to a lot of meetings being held without me even knowing. Is there a way I can set our channel to where I'm the only one who can start and hold a meeting? Yes, most yes. likely by default, this is turned off for your students. Um, or, you know, it's turned off, but there's um, there are policies around teams where you can set this or who can start X type of a meeting um, and who can't, who can view, who can share, who can do all those types of things. And most likely in your organization, yours is set a certain way and your policy just needs adjusted. And there was a discussion yesterday about the uh, educational <clears throat> version of teams and the student roles and things like that, which. Yeah, you might want to make inclusions of there, Christian. Always good to talk about a recording that happened on another day that's uh, separate from from this, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's but this is something where I know that we had. Uh, you know, Maxon, who knew a bit more about the you know education version of of Teams, and so uh, you know, has anybody spent any time with the EDU version? Stacy, you have? Yeah, so I've got like uh, three colleges that I do work with, and by default, the settings are not what you think they are, being conducive for a student, right? Or or even a teacher, honestly, right? They they literally need you to go in there and set it to what you need it to be. So it is not what you think it should be from an EDU standpoint. So it's something you need to go in there and review on how you want to do things. Um, you can set like, you know, policies. Hey, teachers, put them in a group, right? Teachers do this. And this is the permissions that they have. You know, everybody else does this, i.e. students, right? They're probably in another group. This is what students can do. Um, you literally have to go out there and configure that because by default, it is not going to work how you think think or most stu or teachers would think it should work. So you have to go out there and actually look at it and then configure it to your needs because you're going to want to create groups that have your professors, teachers, whatever you want to call them in it. Same thing with your students so that you can segregate those policies so that everybody can do what they need to do. Any other thoughts on that before we? <laughs> Okay. I saw Norm agree with me. I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. You're right. Education is different. There's more controls. There's more tools. And my experience was when we had it roll out through our, the university I used to work at, was that the our account rep made sure that we were following the, the best practice guidance. So it didn't get to the point where the, the teacher was scrambling around to put in those safeguards to you know, protect the classroom experience. And, and I'm going to go back to those default settings with any tenant, depending if they're EDU, GCC, commercial or whatever, you have to visit them and base them off of what you your needs are. And EDU is no different. And the reason why is because they need you to set up those groups so you can identify certain types of users from others. I, just right. an observation, but when we've, we've uh, handled some of these um, EDU questions, there seems to be, uh, again, my just my observation that a lot of the questions are stemming from people not adhering to those best practices and those those outlines, those, those steps. They're they're going and maybe they're taking knowledge of Teams or SharePoint or whatever it is, you know, uh, in the commercial sector and trying to do something the same way in the EDU. And some of these problems have just been solved for the student teacher relationship and collaboration. And so a lot of the controls are in place if you follow the right steps. And, and it's very interesting because we're, we're using these tools from a, you know, a commercial perspective. We're meeting professionally to talk about the business that we do. The, the paradigm is completely different in the school. Like this is this is a tool of, of, of social engagement in some levels. And you wouldn't let two students alone in the shop room or the 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 kitchen area 
you know, unattended with access to all of these different pieces of equipment that can hurt each other. So you wouldn't do the same thing inside of a virtual environment where, you know, cyberbullying, inappropriate uh, conversations, whatever the case might be, but right. it's incumbent upon those education IT uh, stakeholders to make sure that they are following that because yeah. this is where it's different. It's not about adoption, it's adoption and safeguarding. And policies, right? You know, because yeah. not only do you have to have groups to identify, you know, your students from your teachers, from fat, you know, from you know, management and all that kind of stuff within the organization, but also, are you going to allow your students to have their own meetings? If you're going to allow them to have their own meetings, what are your safeguards around bullying? Hey, well, we're going to demand it's automatically yep. recorded. We're going to have a transcription so someone can go through it all those types of things, right? So you can still have those meetings where the teacher doesn't have to be involved in it all the time, but having those safeguards so she can go back and review them when she has time or he has time to say, hey, there's an issue because this, you know, there's some bullying going on, right? So you have to decide what's right for your organization, but you have to go look at it. Microsoft has made huge strides and I don't know if you guys see, I spent a lot of time in the admin center, but there's a thing where, you know, we can go to settings. So when you get a tenant now, they start, uh, they have started a list of things that you need to configure as, you know, once you have a tenant, right? I think it's very short changed. It needs beefed up, but those are those types of things, especially depending on the type of organization it is. These are things that you need to go to do. Otherwise, you're going to have issues regardless if you don't go visit these things. Um, I think Microsoft's on the right track. They to me, I think they need to speed that up a little bit because a lot of organizations, depending on what they are, struggle initially because they don't know they need to go configure that stuff. Well, and some of that configuration still requires PowerShell, and some people are not comfortable with PowerShell. It, exactly. You know, they, they need this, the checkboxes and you know specific instructions on how to do these things and how, can it, yeah. how it so, can affect things. I'm with you there. I think that is the other piece of that. A lot of times they do not tell you you have to go bing or google whatever your choice is right and find out hey is this actually an admin setting i can set or do i have to have powershell to do it it would be nice to know inside that configuration hey you've got to have powershell access so that you know how to route it quickly to get it done right um i would love to see that distinct distinguished um setting there as well It'd be nicer if they'd routed you right to powershell to do it <laughs> yeah, the whole login thing, permissions, you know. <laughs> yeah. And what roles are required for running that might be something that's important too. And skill set. Honestly, I've got to tell you, unless you're skilled in PowerShell, don't give someone access to do it because you can cause a lot of damage and not even know. You know, there's a whole difference between get and do, right? And, and you know, and all that kind of stuff. So um, you have to have some skill set there. So I... You know, I go back to just like, I mean, Sherry, I mean, I'm sure you'll agree, like, you know, end users versus power users. You're not going to give them more permissions that they can shoot themselves in the foot. Same thing with PowerShell or to the admin center, et cetera, right? Yeah, and I'm a PowerShell scaredy cat. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't want to, it's it because I only know enough to be dangerous and I know that. And, so. <laughs> know your limitations. <laughs> <laughs>